In this video, I'll use geometry to compute the sine and cosine of a 30 degree angle, a 45 degree angle, and a 60 degree angle. One way to compute the sine of a 45 degree angle is to use a right triangle with a 45 degree angle. This particular right triangle has a hypotenuse of length 1. Since all the angles of the triangle have to add up to 180 degrees, and we already have 90 degrees and 45 degrees, the remaining angle must also be 45 degrees. So we have an isosceles triangle with two sides the same length. I'll call that side length A. If we want sine of 45 degrees, let's use this 45 degree angle here, then sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So if I can figure out how long this side length is, I'll be able to compute sine of 45 degrees. Now the Pythagorean theorem says this side length squared plus that side length squared equals the hypotenuse squared. So we have that a squared plus a squared equals 1 squared. I'll write that as 2a squared equals 1. So a squared is 1 half, and a is plus or minus the square root of 1 half. Since we're talking about the length of sides of triangles, I can just use the positive square root. It's customary to rewrite this as the square root of 1 over the square root of 2, which is 1 over the square root of 2, and then rationalize the denominator by multiplying the top and the bottom by the square root of 2. That gives me a square root of 2 in the numerator and the square root of 2 squared in the denominator, which is the square root of 2 over 2. So these side lengths are the square root of 2 over 2. Now I can figure out the sine of 45 degrees by computing the opposite over the hypotenuse. That's, I'm looking at this angle, so opposite is square root of 2 over 2, hypotenuse is 1. So the sine of 45 degrees is the square root of 2 over 2. Cosine of 45 degrees is adjacent over hypotenuse. That's this side length over this hypotenuse. So that's the square root of 2 over 2 over 1 again. What would happen if instead of using this triangle with hypotenuse 1, we use this triangle, also a 45, 45, 90 triangle, but with hypotenuse 5, not quite drawn to scale? Please pause the video for a moment and repeat the computation with this triangle. This time I'll call the side lengths b. Pythagorean theorem tells me b squared plus b squared equals 5 squared, so 2b squared equals 25 and b squared equals 25 over 2. b is going to be the plus or minus the square root of 25 over 2. Again, I can just use the positive version. And so b is the square root of 25 over the square root of 2, which is 5 over the square root of 2. Rationalizing the denominator, I get 5 root 2 over 2. Now sine of my 45 degree angle is opposite over hypotenuse, which is 5 square root of 2 over 2 divided by 5. That simplifies to the square root of 2 over 2 as before. And a similar computation shows that cosine of 45 degrees is also square root of 2 over 2 as before. This makes sense because sine and cosine are based on ratios of sides. And since these two triangles are similar triangles, they'll have the same ratios of sides. To find the sine and cosine of 30 degrees, let's use this 30, 60, 90 right triangle with hypotenuse 1. If we double the triangle, we get an angle of 30 here, so a total angle of 60 degrees here, and this angle is also 60 degrees. So we have a 60, 60, 60 triangle that's an equilateral triangle. All side lengths are the same. Since this side length has length 1, this side length is also 1. This entire side length is 1, which means the short side of our original triangle has length 1 half. Going back to my original triangle, let's use the Pythagorean theorem to find the length of its longer side, x. Pythagorean theorem says x squared plus 1 half squared equals 1 squared, so x squared plus a fourth equals 1. x squared is 3 fourths, 
And so x is plus or minus the square root of 3 fourths. Use the positive version and get the square root of 3 over the square root of 4, which is the square root of 3 over 2. Now, using our original triangle again, let's compute the sine of this 30 degree angle here. We know that sine of 30 degrees is opposite over hypotenuse. The opposite of this angle is 1 half, and the hypotenuse is 1. So we get a sine of 1 half over 1, which is 1 half. Cosine of 30 degrees is adjacent over hypotenuse. So that's the square root of 3 over 2 divided by 1. To find sine of 60 degrees and cosine of 60 degrees, we can actually use this same green triangle and just focus on this upper corner angle of 60 degrees instead. So sine of 60 degrees, opposite over hypotenuse, but this time the opposite to this angle is the square root of 3 over 2. Cosine of 60 degrees adjacent over hypotenuse gives us 1 half. I'll summarize the results in this table below. Notice that a 30 degree angle corresponds to pi over 6 radians since 30 degrees times pi over 180 is pi over 6. Similarly 45 degrees corresponds to pi over 4 radians and 60 degrees corresponds to pi over 3 radians. I recommend that you memorize the three numbers, 1 half, root 2 over 2, and root 3 over 2, and the fact that 1 half and root 3 over 2 go together, and root 2 over 2 goes with itself. From that information, it's not hard to reconstruct the triangles. You know that a 45-45-90 triangle is an isosceles triangle, so it must have the side lengths where the same number goes with itself. And a 30-60-90 triangle has one side length smaller than the other, so the smaller side must be 1 half, and the larger side must be root 3 over 2, since root 3 is bigger than 1, and so root 3 over 2 is bigger than 1 half. Doing a visual check, you can easily fill in the angles. The smaller angle must be the 30 degree angle, and the larger one must be the 60 degree one. In this video, we computed the sine and cosine of three special angles, 30 degrees, 45 degrees, and 60 degrees.